Now we're going to compare the Intel stock heatsink and fan for the Pentium 4 and the AMD Phantom 2 stock heatsink for the 550 Black Edition. Um, as you can see, the AMD comes with a 4 pin connection. You can use a 3 pin if you like. No real difference in it. Um, the Intel comes with a standard 3 pin, which is good. Um, it's pretty easy to mount the AMD one. Show you how to do it. One second. Let's see. Just slide it on in the gap. Like that on one side, then on the other side, just put the other link. Make sure this side isn't too loose. Place that in. Both of them are in now. You can see it's sitting nice and flat. Now, just it's falling off. Just twist down like that, and it's in, locked and ready to go. Now, you would normally have a motherboard in between, but I'm just taking out that because I don't really want to do it. As you can see. All right, that's on now. Show you the AMD, I mean, sorry, Intel Pentium 4 core. This is like an aftermarket kind of stock one with a copper base on it. Cost me 10 bucks. It's alright, I guess. Fan is kind of loud, but you know, it's a stock, so what do you expect? See, it's pretty flat. Anyway, you can see that's the mounting bracket. It's pretty standard. You see them everywhere. And to mount it, you gotta line up these four brackets on top, like that. All right, so it's sitting, sitting on it now. Now all you have to do is push down. sure that they've all gone on. Okay, they're all on thoroughly now. Now the fins should be facing up like straight up like that. Keep them up like that, you don't want them locked already. Then simply push one in one direction, one in the other direction like that. And then your heat sink is nice and locked. And then simply just plug it in. Sorry about the wiring, I mean, normally it would be tied together, but it's falling apart, so yeah, it's pretty old. Um, take it off some kind of, sometimes can be difficult. Now, let's see if I can get it. Two free. So you move on to the other side. At least the third one. And then the last one. And there you go. It's off. Now the AMD one is pretty much just flick that over. 
and again done easy as pie and temperature wise that doesn't cool very well at all because it's all aluminium and it's, you know it's pretty much cheap piece of crap but anyway it does come with like a uh, thermal paste already applied but I've wiped that off so I don't need it anymore since I've got an uh, aftermarket cooler um, now this one isn't too bad actually I mean you're gonna get around I don't know in a good case with some decent cooling like 32 degrees idle 30 degrees idle which is alright whereas this probably gonna be looking at like 45 degrees on idle it's just doesn't have any density in it it's just yeah and the fans smaller compared to that bigger fins on that one this one just it's got no it's just I don't know AMD really should have thought of a better cooler when they were shipping out their CPUs I recommend if, if you're buying an AMD, you really need to get a third party cooler on it straight away on your CPU. Unless, if you're planning on overclocking, that is. If you're just going to run it on stock, it's going to be fine. But, yeah, the Intel stockies aren't that bad. This is 478 socket, and this is a AM3, AM2 Plus socket. I think might be AM2 as well. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm selling that motherboard tomorrow, and that, so I won't have that anymore. Uh, I'm out.